DNA evidence and Johnny Depp, the three convicts you're about to meet, had both on their side. And that proved to be enough to set them free from prison today. But 18 years ago, when they were rebel teens in their town, accused of a gruesome satanic murder of three young boys, DNA tests weren't available and there were no celebrities around to take up their cause. Here's our Jim Avila for our series, Crime and Punishment. It's a case so stunning, so controversial, it became a major cause celeb with actors and musicians like Johnny Depp, the Dixie Chicks Natalie Maines, and Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder. I am also here to show my support for the West Memphis Three. Speaking out for the defendants, three little Cub Scouts hogtied and left in an Arkansas ditch, and three teenagers enamored with satanic rituals arrested. It made headlines all over the country, even becoming the subject of three HBO documentaries called Paradise Lost. We were like really the obvious choice because we stood out. I didn't kill these three little boys. The celebrities fighting for the teens' release claimed the kids were railroaded because of their mullets, dark clothes, and fascination with the occult. It makes me scared <laughs> that, you know, this could happen to any of us. And it did happen to these three young outcasts who came to be known as the West Memphis Three after their hometown along the Arkansas-Tennessee border. Damian Eccles, Jesse Miss Kelly, and Jason Baldwin, teenagers then, in their mid-30s today, convicted in what many labeled a literal witch hunt, no physical evidence against them, imprisoned for nearly two decades. I'm just tired. You know, this has been going on for over 18 years. In the beginning, we told nothing but the truth that we were innocent, and they sent us to prison for the rest of our lives. Earlier today, there was Damian Eccles. But today, a bizarre final chapter with a stunning reversal. Four years after ABC News first broke word of DNA evidence that could exonerate them, the West Memphis Three walked free. The legal tangle that has become known as the West Memphis Three case is now finished. Does anyone believe that if the state had even the slightest continuing conviction that they were guilty, that they would let these men free today. It was 1993. The three second graders are found drowned in a ditch in West Memphis. It was before Arkansas could handle DNA testing, no physical evidence to leak the teens to the crime. They were the unusual kids in town, dressed in black. They listened to heavy metal music. They were goths before goths were, uh, were fashionable and so they were easy targets. But one of the teenagers, Jesse Miss Kelly, borderline mentally disabled with a documented low IQ, confessed after four hours of police interrogation, implicating his friends. He would later recant, but the town was already convinced the three devil-worshipping kids were guilty. There seemed to be a whole scare in the community around a satanic panic. I hope y'all really believe in your master, the Satan. He's not going to help you. To me, this place as I stand is like hell on earth. All three would go to prison. Damian Eccles, called the ringleader, was sentenced to death row, held in solitary confinement for a decade. Johnny Depp became so convinced of Eccles' innocence, he gave voice to his prison journal. I can't remember what it's like to walk as a human being anymore. Then, finally, new hope. New attorneys forced the state to perform DNA tests not available in 1993 on hair from the victims. The findings are dramatic. None of it is a match to the imprisoned West Memphis Three. And in fact, the DNA points in a different direction. I don't think they would have let them walk free if they didn't understand that this would be a very powerful defense. Because not only would the prosecutors have a very difficult time linking these three to the crime, the defense could very legitimately point to someone else, someone specific, and say it's more likely that he did it than my clients. Which brings us to today in one of the most shocking and even confusing exonerations seen in a U.S. courtroom. The West Memphis Three would be allowed to walk out of prison, but prosecutors agreed to sign off on the deal only if the defendants would plead guilty. Guilty plea today? Guilty. I am pleading guilty. Normally a judge will say, uh, you can plead guilty, but you need to tell me about what you did. You need to say that you did it. This is different. This is totally different. I mean, this is the defendant saying, almost with a wink and a nod, yeah, we'll plead guilty, in quotes. But the reality is, they're saying, we didn't do it. It's not perfect. It's not perfect by any means. 
but we can still try to clear our names. The only difference is now we can do it from the outside instead of having to sit in prison and do it. In fact, it was a deal the youngest of the West Memphis Three first resisted, wanting to fight for total exoneration, until reminded that his childhood friend Damian Eccles had been in solitary confinement for 10 years, and at one point was three weeks from execution back in 1994. He didn't want to take this deal in the beginning, and I recognize and acknowledge that he did do it almost entirely for me. Thank you. Mr. Brogdon. For Nightline, Jim Avila, ABC News, New York.